Is it sexist to criticize Kamala Harris? Is it racist to scrutinize Barack Obama or the New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg? Is it transphobic to question a biological man playing in women's sports? Is it anti-Semitic to criticize one of the world's most rich and powerful political influencers driving policy in America? The answer to all of these questions is obviously yes. Bullshit, 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 bullshit. Well, yesterday during an interview on CNBC, Elon was confronted about his criticism of George Soros, and he came back with the ganky dom of responses that I think all of you are going to find both refreshing and inspiring. Enjoy. And we will get right into that clip, but first, a quick message from Noble Gold about their free coin offer. There's no denying it. Gold is hot right now. Prices are soaring, and experts are predicting even more to come. Not so long ago, gold reached its all-time high of $2,069 an ounce. And right now, it's inching even closer to that number again. Bank of America, one of the largest banks in the world, is saying gold will rise further still, to over 2,200 an ounce later this year. And now, when the stock market is all over the place and the value of the dollar is uncertain, being safe really counts like never before. Right now, now, Noble Gold is offering a 5-ounce America the Beautiful coin for any qualified IRA or old 401k rollover. Terms do apply. Free with every qualifying precious metals IRA or 401k rollover. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold Investments. Call right now. That's 877-646-5347. Make sure to tell them Drone Tech sent you. Or you can go to noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. And you can find all those links in the description or pinned comment. And remember, there's always risk in investment, and there are no guarantees of any kind. But how do you make a choice? You don't see, I mean, in terms of when you're going to engage. I mean, for example, even today, Elon, you, you, you tweeted this thing about George Soros. No, God, please, no, no. Well, I'm looking for it because I want to make sure I quote it properly. But I mean, you know what you wrote, but you basically. I think it reminds me of Magneto. This is like, you know, calm down, people. This is not like made a federal well, case you, out of it. You also <laughs> have <laughs> You said he wants to erode the very fabric of civilization and Soros hates humanity. Like, when you do something like that, do you yeah, think Yeah, I think about, that's true. That's my opinion. Okay. But why share it? Why share it? Especially, be, I mean, why share it when people who buy Teslas may not agree with you? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, first of all, we're talking about a guy here who I would think calls himself a reporter or a journalist. You know, he's working in the media. He's doing the interview. He's digging for the story. Why would he be against criticism or scrutiny of such a powerful man as George Soros. Instead, he's framing this all as if George Soros is some kind of a victim because Elon Musk took some pretty harsh criticism of him, but it's criticism that a lot of people would agree with. Yet the reporter comes at this like it's gonna hurt Twitter because some people don't agree with Elon Musk's opinions. But do you see CNBC going after, say, Bud Light for putting out an opinion that a lot of people don't agree with? Of course not, because as long as these companies are going woke, this guy is going to agree with that. And he's not going to put any fault on these corporations for doing that and pissing off a lot of their customer base. No, he's going to use that as a pretext, though, to shield George Soros from this criticism that happens to be coming from one of the richest guys on the earth who has one of the biggest platforms on the earth. Advertisers on Twitter may not agree with you. Um... Why not just say, hey, I think this. You can tell me. We can talk about it over there. You can tell your friends. But why share it widely? I mean, uh, I, this is freedom of speech. I'm allowed to say what I you want You absolutely are. But I'm trying to understand why you do. Because you have to know it's got a... There, it, it puts you in, a, in the middle of a... The partisan divide in the country, it makes you a lightning rod for criticism. Wait a minute, a part of, there's a partisan divide in the country about George Soros? Really? Like the country's fighting against each other over George Soros? I don't think so. It's just astounding to me that he's even being asked these questions because he had some criticism of one guy. One guy that actually happens to wield a lot of power in America. The guy pours hundreds of millions into Democrat political groups, which drives policies that a lot of the country thinks is actually 
actually hurting us, especially when it comes to crime. But they don't want you talking about. And the reason for that is in the past, we used to say that, hey, let's go ahead and let Democrats have this power because when they get that power, they're going to use it. It's going to blow up in their faces and then people will realize that it's a bad policy. But the problem is we have a media that works very hard to cover up those failures or deflect blame for those failures. And this focus on George Soros is something they don't want. Ultimately, that's what all this hate against Elon from the media and from the left is all about. They loved having control of Twitter and the fact that Elon Musk now has control of it means that their power to influence and manipulate people has been diminished. I mean, do you like that? I you know, people today are saying he's an anti-Semite. I don't think you are. No, I'm definitely not. I'm, okay. I'm, like, I'm like a pro-Semite, if anything. <laughs> I, I believe that probably is the case. Yes. But why would you even introduce the idea of that? How is he introducing the idea by criticizing George Soros? Why is it suddenly that criticizing this one man means that you're somehow in, against an entire group of people? I mean, I don't know a lot about George Soros or Judaism, but from what I'm told and from what I read, George Soros is not a practicing Jewish man. He's like me. I was raised Catholic. I had my first communion and did all of that stuff, yet I'm not a practicing Catholic. They're literally just using his heritage as a shield against valid criticism. We keep hearing from the Democrats and their media that anti-Semitism and racism are on the rise on Twitter since Elon Musk took over. The problem is they're relying on a report that was literally funded by George Soros. And in this so-called report, it includes examples of anti-Semitism that are negative tweets against George Soros. According to Kanoka the Great, who, by the way, I think you should all go check out. He does really great work. Quote, the report lists tweets about George Soros as one of its 10 themes of anti-Semitism. For Soros in particular, a reoccurring theme was the idea that he has encouraged crime in the U.S. by either sponsoring soft on crime Democrats or directly sponsoring criminals. <laughs> That that would be the, the case. I, I mean, look, we don't want to make this a George Soros interview. No, um, God no. I don't. So, I don't want to at uh, all. But I'm. What I'm trying. Even came up though in the annual meeting. I mean, you know, do your tweets hurt the company? Are there Tesla owners who say I don't agree with his political position because, and I know it because he shares so much of it. Or are there advertisers on Twitter that Linda Yaccarino will come and say, "You got to stop, man." Or you know, I can't get these ads because of some of the things you tweet. You know, I'm reminded of uh, the, the, the scene in The Princess Bride. Great movie. Great movie. Um, where he confronts the person who killed his father. And he says, Off of me money. Off of me power. I don't care. So you just don't care. You want to share what you have to say? I'll say what I want to say, and if, 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 uh, if the consequence of that is losing money, so be it. Okay. What can I say? I freaking love this guy. The fact that they've turned this guy, who's willing to stand on his principles, even if he loses money, should make him a hero to most people, especially somebody in the media. But he's not, because he opposes them, because they are the baddies. It's really quite simple. The media is supposed to keep the powerful in check. Instead, they act as gatekeepers and protectors of the rich and powerful, especially when those rich and powerful people are backing the Democrat Party. The fact that he threatens establishment narratives and brings issues to the forefront that big tech and the media were able to suppress before has made him enemy number one. And quite frankly, that's how it should be. That's how you know he's the good guy. It's not easy to stand up for what's right. In the end, it very well could destroy you, but you do it anyway because it's the right thing to do. That's why I will stand with Elon Musk over his opposition any day of the week. 
All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, share, subscribe, and make sure to leave a comment to continue the discussion. Thanks a lot. I'll see you all in the next one.